This is the third part of Biochemistry Lecture 2, which is talking about chromosome disorders. First of all, finishing up the last bit of the sex genes. Uh, a true hermaphrodite is one that has both ovary and testy tissue. And this is typically the fusion of two or more zygotes, or I guess no, not two or more, two zygotes. Uh, 11, there's been 11 cases of actual fertility from this, so sometimes they actually still can't have children. And only one of the two kinds of tissue works. So like the ovaries and the testes don't both work. Usually it's just the testes works or the ovaries works, even though they have both. That probably has to do with, with uh, whether they have testosterone or estrogen dominant. Okay, so now going on here, there are some single gene abnormalities to discuss. The first one is going to be base pair point mutations. These are the number one cause of single gene abnormalities. So base pair, basically there's a, you know, one of the, like the AT or whatever got swapped out or you know, just one point got mutated or whatever. So there's three different ones here mentioned. There is missense mutation. Missense is where it's a single amino acid gets altered. And the one that they had us think of here, he wants us to think about is sickle cell anemia. A sickle kind of looks like a boomerang to me. So if you think about miss sense, think you threw the boomerang and you missed. Boomerang being a sickle shape, sickle cell anemia missed, missed sense. Okay, so associate sickle cell anemia with missed sense. Now we have nonsense. This is what you need to associate with this Cooley's uh, mutation. So here I want to think of this really cool guy, Coolio guy. Yeah, he's really cool, but he just talks nonsense. Maybe he's like a, I don't know, some guy, Cooley, Cooley guy is just talking nonsense. Okay, now lastly, this uh, delete, there's deletion, frame shift, and splicing. Actually, I should go up a little bit first. Sorry. So this missense, sense. It was just a single amino acid change, and then the nonsense is where essentially it codes for a stop codon. So it's going along, and all of a sudden there's it's, it discontinues the reading of the DNA. It's just stop codon, and then now these last ones. Now there can also be a deletion, a frame shift, or a splice. So when you think of a fray, uh, frame shift, I want you to think of, okay, so here's a frame, all right? Frame for building, here's the frame down here, right? This is like a, a shack. In fact, it's a guy named Tay's shack. So when you think of frame shift, think of Tay, Tay's shack or tay Sachs disease is a frame shift. The frame shifted and the building, the shack fell over. Okay. Also, splice. Splice kind of sounds like spice. So I want you to imagine that somebody's cooking up one of those betta fish. You seen the betta fish? Here's a betta fish. They're, they are cooking up this betta fish, and what are they putting on it? They're putting on some spice or splice. Okay. Mm, some some splice or spice on their their betta fish. So there you go. That's that. Now, really quickly, I'm going to spend the last couple of minutes here. I'm going to review through all the slides that he mentioned, and he said that were high yield. So going through really quickly, you need to know, <coughs> I'm just going to sit down for this. You need to know that chromosome abnormalities happen in 1% of live births. Okay, 1% of live births have chromosome abnormalities. The most com common chromosome abnormality in spontaneous abortions is Turner syndrome, okay? <clears throat> Polyploidy is the presence of a complete set of chromosomes in a cell. And you need to know the difference between polyploidy and aneuploidy. Aneuploidy is the presence of presence or absence of individual chromosomes in a cell. Okay? So polyploidy has two complete sets. Aneuploidy just has a couple individual extra or missing chromosomes. You also need to know that autosomal monosomes, because they're, so, the, so you remember that if you lay down all the different chromosomes, they call them autosomes except for the two that are the sex genes, okay? So there's 44 um, 
if you lay them all out on a tray, there's 44 autosomes and there's two sex chromosomes, X and Y, or X and X. And if it's an autosomal chromosome or autosomal monosomy, it's usually going to be lethal. Whereas if it was just X, that's Turner syndrome is, is uh, people can survive from that. So you also need to know that triple X syndrome, that's where there's a, a woman born with three X chromosomes. They'll often, uh, often it'll go totally not diagnosed. They go through their whole life not know that they have three X chromosomes. Because this happens because of X inactivation and mosaics. In other words, not all their cells may have have the X, the extra X chromosome activated in it or even have it at all. They also typically, people with triple X syndrome will have epicanthal folds, which is like basically, like I can't do it, but <laughs> they, have little, they have like a little more lining of tissue here in, the, in your inner part of their eye. When, you, when they're talking about tetrasomy and pentasomy X syndromes, this is where they got like four X, cro X chromosomes or they have five X chromosomes. They also typically have epicanthal folds and very small mouths. I don't know why that is, but there's measure a person with a really small mouth and four X's or five X's. I don't know. Okay, so next, and that'd be 48 or 49 chromosomes. 49 would be pentasomy, 48 would be tetrasomy. Now for XYY syndrome, where they have a person has 47 chromosomes, but it's, they have an extra Y chromosome. This is typically associated with hyperactivity, attention deficit disorder, impulsive behavior, and having a lot of frustration, easily frustrated. When you think about cri du chat syndrome, that stands for cry of the cry of the cat in French. And I drew a picture earlier of a little cat with, with a little short arm, trying to give a high five, because this happens on chromosome five. But you also need to know this involves semaphorin F, don't know how you're gonna memorize that. Or 5A, which is involved in axonal guidance and connectivity, and delta catenin, migration and cell adhesion. Well, cat and in might be nice to remember because cat is a cry of the cat, that those are the same word. Semaphorin F, F and B F, you could think of cat's fur, F standing for fur. Oh me semi fur, I don't know. Okay, next thing he made a point of saying was that William syndrome is the deletion of chromosome 7. So think of a little boy named William, who's 7. He has uh, elastic rubber bands because they lose the elastin gene. And he took a drink at a cocktail party because they typically have what they call cocktail party behavior. It's almost like overly uh, social, kind of awkward. Next, the wolf Hirsch. Hirschhorn syndrome associated with a Greek warrior helmet. So I drew a picture earlier of a, of a wolf wearing a Greek helmet. And the one you need to really pay attention to here is the WHSC1 gene codes for histone methyltransferase. And so what I thought of is that um, the, the Greek warrior wolf got kicked out of Washington High School. WHSC1 one Washington High School, I don't know, uh, for histone, for uh, histone methyltransferase, or in other words, he had crystal stone, crystal meth crystal stone, whatever. I don't know, you know if you remember or not. Next, uh, velocardiofacial de George syndrome. He made a point of saying the tall nasal root and bridge, poorly developed thymus. So that means they're gonna have less T cells, they poorly developed thymus. And you need to know the TBX1 gene code for transcription factor. And so that, that's what causes the septal heart defects. So I think of a kid named George. This is on chromosome 22. He has a big, long, tall nose, a small thymus, and he got an Xbox, a TBX1, Xbox One for, for his uh, birthday party. Next, duplication syndromes, charcot Mary tooth disease. Remember that uh, Marie Tooth has one big tooth, but she's she is holding a 17 magazine because uh, the duplication of chromosome 17. So you can remember that. Imagine a girl named Marie holding a 17 magazine, 
and peripheral nervous disorder, overexpression of PMP22. So she has, she likes to ride her bike, and so she pumps it up with 22, and it closes the connects on. I don't know how you remember that. PMP22, maybe the bike pump with a tutu on, or maybe she's wearing a tutu, I don't know. But she's holding a 17 magazine, that's the thing, uh, chromosome 17. Next, MECP2 duplication syndrome, MEC P2, MECP2. Uh, problem in muscle development. Maybe you could think if a person has this disorder, they might need to have uh, some robotics to help them move, like mech, like a mech machine. I don't know, because they can't really walk or anything very well. There's also duplication material of the long arm of the X chromosome. Mech two, mech P two genes codes for protein that binds methylated DNA and recruits in histone. Deacetylases, inhibiting transcription and underexpression of other genes. I remember that. Next, a little mention about sex determination disorders. You just need to know that the SRY gene is for the testes determining factor or the TDF. Also know that the SOX9 gene also has to do with activating things that result in normal sexual development. And the androgen binding receptor ABR, uh, ah, I lost my turn of thought there. Also the Leydig cells, uh, they're the ones that produce testosterone. I think the, the ABR must activate the Leydig cells, I'm not sure. I think it's the TDF that actually activates the Leydig cells. I'm not sure what the ABR does. <coughs> Binds energy. <laughs> Next, uh, De La Chapelle syndrome is where a woman has testes. De La Chapelle. How am I going to memorize that? Think of a woman wearing chaps, those cowboy things, because she's got balls, she's got testes. I don't know. So um, basically what happened with this is the SRY gene translocated to... The SRG, SRY gene is the thing that makes a guy develop primary sexual characteristics. So in this case, think of the SRY actually transferred over to the X chromosome, so she got this. And then the XY male with female phenotype, ovary, is another thing that also happens. That's the SRY deletion or, or SOX9 deletion. I'm running out of time, so I go a little bit faster. And also there's Schweier syndrome, which is an XY gonadal dysgenesis, or sterile. So next for female pseudohermaphrodism, this is essentially, so it's pseudohermaphrodism because they're not true, they don't truly have both sets of adult tissue they only have one set but it they look like they look like they have um, a karyotype like they look they, yeah they look like hermaphrodites okay and so in this case it's um, it's the, he said remember the enzyme deficiencies the only enzyme I'm seeing here is 21 hydroxylase for female so 21 hydroxylase okay and for the guys, the enzyme that I'm seeing here is um, not seeing any enzymes on this one. But there's an XLR and AIS, and the testes being in the abdomen. Okay, so if male pseudohermaphrodism, oh, you need to know the 5 ARD, which is out there, it is 5 alpha reductase deficiency, 5 ARD, that's the enzyme. Okay, next, single gene abnormalities, base pair. We already actually talked about this in the video, so I'm not going to go over this again. And that's the whole thing.